Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Table Takes presented by Gen Con. I'm Christian. I'm joined today by Bonsai, Emma, and Derek, and we got Hello. some stuff to talk about today. Starting with games, the Any Awards are coming up. Bonsai's going to lead us through how we go about those. Yes, remember last week when we went on and on about all the Ennies? Uh, guess what? Voting is now open. And uh, this voting system is going to be ranked choice. So you can go ahead and uh, have about five different options. What you want to do is look at all the options and rank from number one choice to number five so it feels like your votes aren't wasted. You don't have to use all of them, but how rank votes work is basically they, they go through the list and say, okay, who has all the votes and who doesn't have any votes? If they don't have any votes, we'll kill them and then move on to the next next. To the That's next right. Round. We're murdering nominees this year. <laughs> yep. As a reminder, if anyone missed the last week's show and mm -hmm. doesn't know what the Ennies are, mm -hmm. uh, it's the Gen Con Awards for role-playing games. It is awards yes. at Gen Con, at Gen to Gen be Con. clear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so use this as your tool for you as the consumer to choose what games you want to highlight to change the market, because when sellers see that, hey, you, there's a trend for this particular game, then you know what? If you vote for it and they see it, then they'll probably make more of that particular game. It's yeah. also a good thing where if, if there's something that you really loved mm -hmm. that you would like to see mm -hmm. get more success, um, a lot of times putting an award on something can kind of help get the word out. It can make people a little more confident in buying it. So if one of your kind of personal small favorites is nominated in one of these categories, go in and vote for the games that you've had some experience with. And then you'll vote. have people to play it with in the future. Yes. And for a lot of times I don't even bother voting for anything because it's just a pain, you feel like it doesn't matter. But in this case, you know, especially for the smaller categories and with the style of voting, your voice can actually be heard. Yes, because mm -hmm. the points roll over. If your number one candidate happens to get kicked out, your number your number two vote still counts mm -hmm. as a point yeah. for them. So the way that it works is, you know, again, you have the the one to five. Oh, I think one of the categories, I think fan favorite publisher, mm -hmm. gets you. You can make ten selections. Mm. So the way that it works is, you know, they will put your vote, your your one vote, to whoever you voted for number one. Mm. Yes. Um, and then, like, they'll count up everybody's number one vote, and whoever in that group got the fewest votes, they will like Eliminate. remove them from the pool, and everybody who had cast their vote for that, they then go to their number two selection mm. and redistribute their votes based on who their number two was, mm -hmm. and they keep doing that until somebody gets over fifty percent, or mm. there's only. I mean, I, 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 there's only one left. <laughs> yeah, there can only be one. It's yeah. a really smart system for voting. Maybe they should use that for other stuff as well. I can't oh. imagine anything where hmm. it would be useful, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sure, it's a shame we don't have a use for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the shame, real world. In the real world, you know. Press yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, did you say something? No, no, I'm sorry, I had a cough. Yeah, Yeah. I was very amused that the, the Ennies have a video to explain how that voting works, mm. yeah. and they link to the CCP Grey video on different election systems and the strengths and weaknesses of them, and mm -hmm. really good video. Yeah. Oh, speaking <laughs> of that, more voting that is uh, taking place, you can actually vote for the next judge for 2020. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Um, only two of the judges from this year are going to be rolling over, and it seems that everybody from the prison 2000 sentences finally start. Yes, <laughs> from everybody from 2019 that didn't make the count is actually reloading or reapplying as well mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. judges. So. Well, I I think right now is actually a really important time to vote for any judges because yes. this is kind of a transitional period for the Ennies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're separating from EN World. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're their own thing now. Mm -hmm. They have a very clear mission statement that they want to accomplish. So if you care about that kind of stuff, this is a good chance to try to, to vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the judges are the ones that pick. So the whole big list we talked about, mm -hmm. and you go in there, you see them, the judges are the ones who compile that list. So the judges aren't actually Ooh. voting now, because it's all just a uh, popular vote at this mm -hmm. point. But to get things through that first barrier, then that's what we need the judges for, and also for the judges' choice. Mm -hmm. yes. The bane of the gaming nerd, the popularity <laughs> contest. It <laughs> <laughs> gets us every time. But we keep making it. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, there's really, how else do you do it? We hate it, but we love it. Yeah, yes. no, it's, just, it's okay. We just wanna like things that other people like. I mean, doesn't everybody? No. No. <laughs> no. We want everyone to like the <laughs> things we like. Well, yeah. yeah, no, that, meet us. See, that's yeah. we don't want to go there. Important. I don't care if I like things that other people like. As long as they like the things I like, we cool. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> Curate your friends. You know what I like? Mm. Star Wars. Oh, oh. Who doesn't? Awesome. Now, that's a... I know those people. That is a dangerous They're question. They're bad yeah. people. <laughs> bad people don't like Star Wars. Mm. <laughs> 
if there was anything interesting happening in the Star Wars world, say with X-Wing or any of those other games, I would love to hear about that from Emma right now. I would love to talk about that. Oh. So they are uh, a couple of things that they're expanding upon. First up is the multiplayer battle expansion. Mm -hmm. So there has been some precedent for multiplayer games in X-Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly 1v1, but there's uh, the epic team tournament rules. So multiplayer games have been played in the past. But only like in special event tournament format. Yeah, yeah. and, okay. and homebrew, right? Sure. Like if you're with your friends, People, yeah, I mean, BGG, they're like, again, I've played with 12 people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was say, like, again, Homebrew are... rules are my favorite anyway, just because, like, you can make the other players say pew, pew, pew as yeah. they're shooting. Well, <laughs> but, like, we are tabletop Wait, gamers. Say? Like, yeah. there's no way to stop us yeah, from homebrewing everything. Yeah. Oh. So, so Unless you play at my house and then you do. Oh, well, you have to say pew, pew, pew. Yeah, you, you lose your We focus. have similar house, similar house <laughs> rules, I see. If you don't. So, but this is the first, uh, I believe, the first system with uh, a rules package that will facilitate multiplayer games. That's two day players uh, and the big eight, eight part players of it, is gonna be nuts. Oh that is gosh, a lot. Yeah. Well the way that they're doing it is by facilitating rules to let you put ships into squads. Mm -hmm. So it's less I mean if you yeah eight players you can have like twenty TIE fighters on the battlefield at a time. So it'd be a lot of ships if you're moving each one individually but moving them as squads is gonna make it <laughs> manageable. Presumably at eight players it's still gonna be intense. So it's gonna be a very a lot going on there. Well, like the idea of, of grouping your small units into a a wing or a squad yeah. and putting it on a tray, <laughs> uh, I, I find it real interesting yeah. that, that that comes out just as Warhammer Apocalypse just came out, mm -hmm. uh, where they're pushing movement trays there too. Yeah. So I think they basically, shockingly enough, both companies want everyone to buy a lot of minis. Oh, and what? Them on the I don't know table. why they would want people to buy more of their product. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense very to me. Confusing. Well, it's very interesting too because. 1v1 games, you know, you're like, well, a two-player game at least, like, you can usually get one other player, so it can mm -hmm. be easier than other player counts, but you might have more friends than just one friend. So yeah. I've been hanging out before where it's like me and my husband and a person who plays X-Wing. It's like, well, how do we do this? Well, how about you two play and I'll kind of facilitate it. So having an easier way to do a three-player game mm -hmm. is very smart and it's a way to get a third person, just pull mm -hmm. one person into your... Yeah, we usually just game. have ours do the sound effects because we just <laughs> love the fact that there's the Doppler effect <laughs> in space. Ah, <laughs> 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 that is definitely not a spaceship noise. <laughs> no. It's 100% not. not a spaceship. Okay, that is I like tried. you turning off a force field <laughs> okay, noise. Yeah. This, is, this is like when I tried to do my British They use the accent. weirdest noises for <laughs> spaceships. And you made me stop the British accent. I said like two words. You're like, no, this yep. you can't do this. Mm -hmm. I think we need to pre-approve all your all your accents and sound effects before Look, streaming. how am I going to get better if I can't practice? Yeah. Anyways, yep. the second big announcement <laughs> from X-Wing is the bigger ships. Yeah. So they're conversion kits mostly. Like I believe that all of these ships have existed before. So it's the Tantive Four expansion and the Sea Rock Cruiser expansion. So these ships already exist. They're not doing new yeah, ships. Yeah, the, the Tantive Four definitely has that like that classic Corellian cruiser with the big chunky butt. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the Princess Leia ship. ship. Yep. I like them Corellian. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah. But the the the. the <coughs> The conversion kit is the same kind of kit I think they were s setting up for a lot of the other stuff to help people who had bought a bunch of stuff for first edition, first edition. transition into second edition. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're making it really easy for people to transition between mm -hmm. the two editions, taking all your older ships and be able to play with them. But mm -hmm. one of the most exciting things for the expansions is you can buy the whole ship again if you don't have it, but you have a lot of upgrades. Mm -hmm. So you have different things. Uh, well, first of all, if you've ever, ever played X-Wing, the big ships are the hardest part to use. So you'll be like, I'm going to have a big spaceship and blow everyone up. It's like, yeah, but you have to turn around, and it's really hard to know where you'll end up once you've like gone I like that you're demonstrating with the robot dance. <laughs> <laughs> and pointing the other direction. So these things uh, can be a little tricky to maneuver. Uh, but if you can get past that maneuverability uh, complexity, you know, mm. also some, some fun stuff with the uh, upgrades, including commands, teams, cargo, and hard points. So you get additional attacks shooting mm -hmm. from different directions. Mm -hmm. So you, you might not win with this huge ship because it's a little complicated against a TIE fighter. You're like, oh, I'm going to blow up the TIE fighters, right? It's yeah. super easy, but they're like here, and then they're behind you, and you're like, Ugh. But you have to say, like, that does completely support the way it, what happens in the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just these, I mean, the you got to have Death the soundtrack Star. blaring in the background <laughs> when you do Whoever, it, I mean, with your house rules, whoever plays the big ship is going to have to have some water nearby mm -hmm. to... to you know, keep them hydrated as they're making pew pew yeah. constantly <laughs> and forever. <laughs> 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 
That's if you have extra friends. Okay. Mm. I'm just wondering, like, in terms of like an eight-player massive game, do you start using the pushy stick? You know, when you have like a table in, in, in the war room. In like the like, war room, they're like, yeah. like we're playing craps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, like when you get a big enough table. like gaming table, you yeah. have to like. Yeah. What is the pushy stick? So, you know, like, like a, a police baton? No, no. It's, it's 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 got the stick and it's got the little flat end at the bottom, or and, you're, and you're like, you like, sir have I, never played a mega game before. Yeah. Then, yeah. See? It's one of those like I move my armies to Italy, <laughs> and you just kind of push them at me, bonsai. So, so lots of exciting stuff, fun new ways to play X-Wing. Uh, and in Bonsai would like a Star Wars branded pushy stick. Come yes. so, so going to have a pushy stick. So pay attention. I'm yeah. sure Fancy I have to use If you can get the, the logo stick mm -hmm. on there, like, but it can also be like the arm because you need to pull sometimes. Yep. So, like, oh, you the, can have the like, I, I do want to know what arm. that's called. I want to know what that thing is called. That it can't be called a pushy <laughs> you, stick. You don't it sounds like you make really crappy it's booby got, traps with it's, it. It's basically like a tabletop hoe. Oh, I know what it is. You don't need the little grabby arms. You can just put it on the other side. Why can't you accept pushy you're... stick? That's because what it does. Because pushy stick is fine. I don't know. Pushy stick just sounds like something the police should use to me. So wait, so you're okay with the thing like this being called a grabber, but you can't, yeah. this can't be a pushy stick? Pushy yeah. stick. Okay. All in so. favor of pushy stick? It sounds like I. a crappy candy bar. <laughs> right. It's like. It's true. Yeah. That's definitely something you'd get in Ireland. <laughs> Gal votes. Galaxy Minstrel and pushy stick. Cat <laughs> needs to vote. Pushy stick or. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Or nothing. Or that's nothing. All they got. love you, Bonsai. They're going to mm. pick Pushy Stick. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know this. All right. Anything <laughs> else for Star Wars? Uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Man, who would have thought that Star Wars would have put out so darn little? And <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. No, they have a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Disney owns it. Yeah, and they've got they've got all sorts of products, including role playing games. But who's going to run that role playing game for you if you don't have any friends that play Star Wars? Well, mm. Derek's got a couple ideas about that. Well, there was a, a recent Bloomberg Business Week article uh, that yeah. was going around that a lot of people may have seen about a number of professional GMs. Yes. Mm. Uh, and, you know, everybody is all up in arms about or, or discussing yeah. the idea of professional GMs. But it's, it's one of those things that's very funny because it always seems to come up every couple years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you look into it even cursorily, you know, there are articles going back to 2017, to mm. 2014, to 2013, to 2007. Like, the internet was actually around then. Wow. I remember. Oh. Yep. Vaguely. Yep. Wow. Uh, so it's, it, always, it always comes back up yeah. of people running games for, you know, for their rent, basically. Mm. Yeah. And when you're talking about professional GMs in this scenario, we're not talking so much about... People like Matthew Mercer, who's doing an entertainment, yeah. like not entertainment streaming, uh, yep. and more so someone who's contracting out their services mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. a GM. So less less role playing game is a performative entertainment, mm. uh, yes. a show, and more uh, a service of you know, normal players hiring somebody to run for them. Mm -hmm. It was it it was always weird to me when the idea came up. Because I was always in groups where we had more GMs than we could handle. Wow, you're like, lucky. We did, that's that's <laughs> not a normal problem. <laughs> that's, not a our, our problem that's the was, gamer equivalent of first world problems. Yeah, first, like, yeah. Our problem was figuring out how we could fit enough games into the week to get through yeah. the, the people who Why wanted to run. Why don't you share some of your yeah. GMs with the rest of our group? Apparently, like, just farm. Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe if they had paid us, well, we would have maybe, yeah. distributed ourselves There's, appropriately. See, that's what money does. It distributes uh -huh. supply and demand. Yeah. So the, the, the <coughs> capitalism the, wow, wow. Yep. <laughs> capitalism wow. The more you know. Uh, so the Bloomberg article okay, kind of interviewed and profiled the several different people who are doing different models of professional GMing. Mm. There was the guy who was doing it kind of in addition to his day job. He was charging three hundred dollars for a four-hour session. He had a whole setup where he was doing team building exercises for companies mm -hmm. for five hundred dollars. Um, he has a Twitch channel with a bunch of subscribers. There was kind of that model. Yeah. There was the pastor um, who has like a retreat for mm. 400 to $700, kind of depending on, I think, what kind of lodging you need. Mm -hmm. That you know shows people how to use Christian D and D camp. Yeah, exactly. Which which is wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, what a remember back in the day where people are like, that's a devil's game. You know, yeah. we actually do remember back in the day when that was a oh, devil's yeah. game. Yeah. We were alive then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was that, but there was also uh, a transgender woman who kind of got into it because she was looking for work, and mm -hmm. she, you know, well, I, I think apparently it was like during her initial transition, mm. yeah. and she was looking for work, and 
you know, obviously running into a lot of problems doing it. So she started doing um, like fifteen dollars uh, per player for a four-hour session. I think mm -hmm. a lot of it was online. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was also uh, somebody I think in LA uh, or New York who was running for celebrities. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, doing one hundred dollar for one-hour training sessions and had a game and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So th there was a huge spectrum of different people. Different business models, different price points, different intents. Yes. But it, it just it highlights that there's a lot of people who want to get into gaming. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people who are used to it. But I think the reactions to this are really, I think in a lot of cases, kind of miss why this is happening. Mm. Yes. Because the reactions are often like, why would you ever pay someone to do this thing I can do for free? Or come over to my house and I'll do it for free. Uh -huh. Or things like that. But they miss people just wanting to be like, you know, I just want a game. Maybe I've, you know, been gaming for a long time and I want a really great experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I've never tried before and I want to know I that... Have quality. Yeah, I want to know that it's quality. I, I don't want to have to worry about anything. I just want it all packaged for me yeah. and someone yeah. to do the work so I can just sit down and play. So let me, yeah, let me put this in perspective for people. Like, people are like, oh, just go to your gaming store and then you can find... A lot of people don't have access to gaming stores. And yeah. Also, there are some... In gaming culture, there are some prejudices. Mm -hmm. That's a very hard word for me to say. Yeah. Um, like, for example, like if you're a young kid going in there, there's not really, like 14 years old, there's not many people that would enjoy a 14-year-old joining their game. But if you can be like, hey, I have the money, mm -hmm. mm. that gives them more of an incentive. Um, well, also but that, e that even also just touches on yeah. you know the people who not even the Christian one but the people who run D and D summer camps. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a couple stores that have that kind of program, and nobody really bats an eye at the idea of paying for that. But then when you transfer that to yeah you know we hire a GM to come out and run for us, a lot of people have a really visceral reaction against that. Hmm. I I honestly think it's a lot of things with um, like. I would quote unquote like let me put little like brackets mm -hmm. yeah, nerd absolutely. culture yeah because they've been g getting everything for free for mm -hmm. so long yeah. yep. and then when somebody's like you know what we have been doing this for free but like I put a lot of effort there's people mm -hmm. that I've seen put like weeks into developing yeah. this yeah. world mm -hmm. and whenever something happens like that was free that people want to go ahead and make yeah. money how off many of games them? have you been in where you lost where the game has fallen apart because of an underappreciated GM yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. Like, that's, I, a, I'm, that's a very real yeah. problem even before you get to professional GMs yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'm very much of the opinion that you should appreciate your GMs more yeah mm -hmm. um, like just every now and then like buy them a dice box or something like that like mm -hmm. it really you know like that's happened to me so like my players have bought me something I it, cook mm -hmm. for mine yeah it's it's really really it's really nice as a GM to feel that appreciation. Yeah. Because um, you you run the game because you love the game, but it's still a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's nice to kind of have confirmation back. Yeah. Um, even without getting paid for it, things like that. I've got to appreciate my GM more. This you is do. a public a service I'm not. It is. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is. They, you don't, they put hours of work <laughs> yeah. in before you even sit down at the table. Usually mm -hmm. food and baked goods are also a very Yeah, how about cheese? Yep. Yeah, I don't the think GMs there's like any cheese? reason that they... Uh, I like would, cheese plates? I would check to see if the GM likes cheese. Okay. Or also and then, lactose. Then 100% yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think that we're saying that we want every GM to be a pro GM no. at no. this point. But yeah. if you have a group, it's hard to keep your group together. Get people, you know, it, it's not a bad it's not a bad idea if you want to do a regular game and haven't found a way to actually be able to keep that group together. Yeah. Having you pool your money together to pay for the GM mm -hmm. every week is a good incentive for yep. people yeah. to show up. Mm -hmm. Yep, like and so there, I think there's a lot of ways to look at this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think A, you know, GMs deserve more appreciation overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then B, just, you know, there are a lot of cases where it makes perfect sense to pay somebody yeah. and to have them do a lot of the work so that the players don't have to worry about it and they can just show up and enjoy the time. Yeah. And there's different ways for that to happen, too, because mm -hmm. as we get more and more game stores that have food and have private rooms and stuff like that, yeah. you know, maybe one of the things that you do is you don't necessarily pay the GM, but what if you uh, get a room at a local gaming store and all the players just chip in so the GM doesn't have to buy their dinner. Yeah. Like, like yeah. that kind of stuff. You get a space to play, the GM gets some food, like all that kind of stuff. There's going to be a huge gamut of skill level and, and reimbursement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we're kind of reaching a point where this idea of professional GM, the, almost like the half-life of when we talk about it seems to be getting shorter and shorter. shorter. Yeah. Right. So the yeah. idea keeps coming up more and more, and I kind of wonder at what point it's just going to be like, 
Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, you talk about game stores, and I was working at Mox Boarding House during the rage of Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. So this oh. must have been like a year ago or so when it like crested and mm -hmm. parents were coming into the store asking they're like D and D my kids like using it as a mm -hmm. verb like do <laughs> the D and D's and we're like okay well you know there's like a starter thing you can do this you can they're like I don't some parents you know want to do with their family like I don't I don't have time to like mm -hmm. learn all this stuff and I think for in that scenario in particular parents feel more comfortable it's, it's like a babysitter it's a thing yep. it's a professional yep. service when you mm -hmm. pay for it as opposed to just like oh here's just some person who sits in the corner and go be with them you know yep. The payment. <laughs> the payment implies, you know, a professional courtesy mm -hmm. that there's like some checks level, and yeah. balances yep. in place. Um, some level of responsibility, exactly, uh, or commitment. Like so, in, in chat, I think yeah. uh, Kristen was mentioning in chat when people pay for something, they're more likely to show up. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. so that also, you know, I'm sure all now of that's us have, not always true. Not always, no. but they're more likely to show up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if they don't show up, you're like, well, at least I got the money. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here. You know, I'm sure all of us have had stories of we had campaigns that were going well, and yeah. then players just kind of filtered out yeah. and stop showing up. Yeah. Because real life gets in the way, yep. absolutely. But mm -hmm. you know, when they're losing 50 bucks for not showing up, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> they think about it twice. Yeah, that'll mm -hmm. up on the priority list. <laughs> but I, I also think it kind of ties into conventions too. Yeah. Because you know, obviously, you know, that's where a lot of my direct experience with, yeah. with paid, paid GMs in a sense is. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, people at Gen Con have to pay to play games. And there are people who don't like that idea to begin with. Mm -hmm. But I really encourage GMs when they're running at Gen Con to think about their time yeah. and to consider adding more money on top of what their base price is. Yeah. Just because, you know, if you're going to run a four-hour RPG and it's going to cost $4, like... That's an extremely nominal fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if cool. you if you add two dollars or four dollars to that, so it becomes a six dollar, a eight dollar, a ten dollar. Then at least you yeah. paid for yeah. your it's, sandwich. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's still ten dollars for four hours or a coke of, of, a, of what should be a machine. good game. Mm. And yeah. Not a lot of people are going to say that that is an unreasonable rate. <laughs> and now you have money to pay for the supplies, pay mm -hmm. for your time, or go to pay, steak and shake. Pay for some of your food. Yep. Ooh, steak and shake. <laughs> Yeah. And there's the perception of quality, right? Like, yeah. if I'm looking on the Gen Con events list and I see this one that's $2, there's one that's $10, like, capitalist brain, right? It's yep. like, oh, they must be doing something fancy. They're pulling out all the stops over there, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, there is there is that trickery, too. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but that can lead to disappointment very quickly. Wow. Yeah, but there's a psychological, if you pay for more for something, you actually like it, enjoy it more, mm -hmm. yeah. like it better. There's, like, there, weird There tricks. are a lot of very weird things. And I feel yeah. like if you pay somebody, especially if you're new to the game, um, if you pay somebody to just actually help you walk through the oh rules, my gosh, yeah. like that's like I can imagine like somebody just that like, should be part of the service anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also, you need to let your GM know what you're getting into and be like, hey, I don't know how to play this game. That's yeah. why I'm yeah. paying you for it. He, you know, let yeah. them know that so they don't expect but yeah, no, that, I, you know I, how to, I fully, that you know what you're doing. Yeah, I fully support this kind of like mindset of supporting because like they do take hours of their time. Mm -hmm. They are storytellers. They are creating a world for you. And full yeah. disclosure, I, I do this. So no. well, yeah, so we, we talked about that. Yeah. Like, do you want to share any of your kind of <coughs> personal experience with that? No, no, because it would. You know, uh, <laughs> no. Thanks no. for your time. <laughs> no, no. Reason being, uh, it's you know, it's not something that I particularly love. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a great GM to begin with. I. Uh, I mean, Aww, I do. I you're do, a great GM. Thank you. I do great on my show because that's the story I want to tell. Sure, mm. sure. Uh, yeah. But players aren't always looking for the story that you want to tell them. Right. Yeah. Right. Usually they're looking for something specific, and they tell you what that is when they are saying, "Hey, I'd like to hire you as my GM." Yeah. In my case, they didn't hire me because they wanted, you know, because I'm a, a great GM. They hired me because I'm a famous wizard, and they World thought that famous would be actor. fun. Yeah. Oh. Right. So, uh, and it went well. We had great sessions, mm -hmm. but eventually the same problem creeped in, and mm. people stopped, you know. Coming. Showing up every week. The fact that we're doing it online, obviously, is a little bit harder. Mm. Uh, and I feel I can offer a better full-service experience in person. Yep. Mm. Uh, especially since, you know... I, well, I, I mean, Zoe does do a number of uh, games, you know, with the cast at Gen Con. Oh, yeah. Are you doing any of those this year? No, no. Okay. I'm, 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 That's right, because you're just doing the, the main stage shows. Doing the main stage shows. I'm working the booth. I'm, you know, making sure I'm out there for the fans. Mm. Sure. Sure. Very That's cool. what it's for. I don't get to actually play games at Gen Con. But I do go to other conventions and run games all the time. Mm -hmm. And I run those for free. Mm -hmm. mm. Because I'm trying to get the word of that game out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here, I'm there to sell the game, not to, uh, you know, be the best GM in the world. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I have a feeling this is a topic that's going to come back up again. Yeah, uh, if, if the, the Half-Life theory is working, I think 
what we're probably at like a six to nine month window before yeah. the next kind of big <laughs> article about it. Nine so yes. if we want to set our watches, <laughs> and plus uh, bonsai, I decided we're gonna we're gonna double team a story about that has, yeah. that has something to do with that together. Yeah. Uh, oh come on, come on, come on. Sorry, yeah, I didn't there you go. See that. You left me hanging. I was like, yeah, I know, we're teaming up, and then I went, oh, go uh, team, team. I, I thought you were just waiting to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just like, okay, I'll take it. I probably deserve it. No. <laughs> no. But yeah, no, it, it's very interesting because we do have this branch, but what we're talking about and like what Christian and I were thinking about doing is about how like these type of games can apply and help people in different mm. ways in terms of like, cool. yeah. Therapy, yeah. Therapy? I mean, yeah. essentially people are using it for professional therapy and mm -hmm. gamers have been using it for, you know, unknowing <laughs> therapy for years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not realizing that like, hey, I just got all my social skills from D&D &D over the last four years and now I know how to talk to people. How yep. weird. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you throw dice at them. <laughs> That's exactly you talk it. right in the eye. And if they disagree with you, you stab them with your crossbow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you're stabbing with a crossbow, maybe we should talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how that works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a threat. So, <laughs> it was. What mm. kind of person would stab someone with a crossbow? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, good question. Maybe uh, a, villainous a, a, villain. Person. a villainous person. A villainous person yeah. would. Speaking of villainous. What? Oh, great segue, wow. Ella. Wow. This is all you. Uh, so a new villainous expansion has been announced. Mm -hmm. In case you have somehow missed villainous, which would be surprising, seeing as this post on Instagram has 30,000 likes already. And that's almost everybody in America. Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. Mm. Yeah. Divided by like 150. <laughs> yeah. So the new, so Villainous is a game of Disney villains. Mm -hmm. It's a um, deck manipulation game. Mm -hmm. You're playing your cards, all the cards have abilities, all is asymmetrical. Yep. Because you're, you're, you're all playing a different villain who yes. has a totally different deck, a different play style, a, a totally different, different feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, I just love the word deck manip there. manipulation. It <laughs> <Deck just laughs> makes manipulation. me so happy. It's it, a very it, villainous it, Yeah, it, do, it does yeah, sound yeah, the, reasonably villainous. Yeah, we all twiddle their fingers like, ha -ha. Deck manipulation. manipulation. Yeah. And th this game is on fire. So it, it blew up at Gen Con mm -hmm. last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, totally. They had an awesome booth with like de decorations. I remember playing it at PAX, oh, yeah. teaching people at PAX. Uh, people were lining up for that. They already did the one expansion for uh, two or three new characters. Mm -hmm. And now they have three new characters coming out, uh, coming soon. I don't think they've announced a release date. Maybe? They also have not announced who those characters oh, are. Oh, they have not no. announced who the characters are. The Instagram post is the same as with the last one with the outlines. Mm -hmm. And of course, the player markers for these characters are not the figurines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're an abstracted, like the, the art on this and the style. Yeah, the is production like, is very good. Like it's, yeah. it's absolutely like, I will say, if you are a gamer mm -hmm. and you like Disney, yes. then I will just say you should get this game. You need to get this game. Yes. yes. Because it is really, really good if you are in that Venn diagram where it crosses yeah. over. And Venn even if you're not, like, I'm not a huge Disney fan, but right. I really enjoy the game. Yeah. Uh, so if I fun. If I had a friend who really loved Disney, I would absolutely play this game with them a bunch. Oh, yeah. And it was developed by... Force Prezan, who we talked about mm -hmm. recently, was bought by Funko mm -hmm. and just known for designers who really care about games. So they're not just slapping IPs on mm -hmm. things. They yep. work really hard to make these games really good, including workshopping and playtesting, which I've participated in. So, so right now you have the insider I, info and you are going to... <laughs> and you can't tell we us. We can expose what they are. I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> any of the rumors. Oh. Also, oh. I forgot, I think... I don't it's really real, remember. Real <laughs> so let's, let's real do some, let's do some spec spec So I did, I did do some, some uh, Illuminati mm. Google search Ooh, myself because yeah. I'm like, ooh. So you went, you went deep web. Yeah. I deep went deep web and was like, Use the enhance, oh, enhance from the computer. Yeah. So, and then also there's some of the Instagram <laughs> posts kind of like hint, at least one of the bigger things that in my like theory brain mm. goes is they made it look like Pride Rock. Mm. Lion King is coming out. Mm. So that first one. I like you're accusing me Derek Lion King's yeah. coming out. Lion oh, I know it's okay. Yeah. I you know it's coming out, Derek. Don't, don't even deny it. it. But yes. But another thing is so that. So you're thinking, you're thinking Scar? Scar, because okay. also mm. like if you ever look in his most iconic shot, he it's him like douche, douche, like that gas scene where he's walking up. Douche, douche. Mm. Douche, douche. douche, douche. I thought it was douche. Reanimator. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically this this pose mm -hmm. of Scar, I think, is mm. that sure. Okay. particular you, and, and right, so, the you're, song, so you're confident the in a song. Scar. Yeah, I'm confident in a Scar. I think, I think scar. another one of those silhouettes is pretty clear. Oh, mm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So so we have... <laughs> what, 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 what sound again? Just, just to be clear, uh, we have douche douche in... 
Why, why you have to make fun of our sound effects? No, no, I'm not. Like, no, no, is, they're I, good. I, I, I want the, these. I want the these sound effects to be play. renamed. Like no one is going to be playing Scar. Be, I'm going to play <laughs> Douche Douche, please. Can I have <laughs> the Douche Douche character? But no, like douche when douche. they do his song, doesn't no, it like come I, back? I, yeah, yeah. I, no, like that's why it's so great. That's why the sound effects so great because you say it. And I can immediately see the scene and the the green smoke flying up when yeah. they're in the elephant graveyard and stuff. Remember, yeah. we're not laughing at you. We're laughing at you sympathetically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I used to be a teacher. This is why I do a lot of sound effects, okay? But and I, hand I, motions. I like it. Well, I'm in so hand It's also because we're children. <laughs> like the I did in this <laughs> The body's I, I just made us. a joke one-two punch. It's oh, my favorite. Oh, yeah. But yeah, um, so... Uh, so we have... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And douche douche. <laughs> yes. Douche. So uh, who is that? Who is. Oh, uh, that is from The Emperor's New Groove. Uh, oh, Yzma. Okay. Yzma. Yeah. Dunk, both supposedly. Yes, yeah, supposedly. Still supposedly. I mean, there are so many Disney I don't movies know I have So seen. who are you hoping for? You have not seen The Emperor's New Groove? I've seen parts of it. Oh, oh. it's so good. Look, I haven't seen I didn't I see it until like two years <laughs> ago. I haven't seen so that. I, I haven't seen Mulan. I haven't <gasps> seen. What? The Buddha movie. I haven't. Mm. The oh, I hope it's the villain of Mulan. I want it to be the Chinese patriarchy. Mm. Yeah. But, but he's no. Yes. But this the figurine looks thin, and he's not thin. Mm. He's very opposite. <laughs> Have you, which one are we talking about now? A Mulan. Yes. No, I'm, 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 I was, oh yeah. So we can. Okay. So we'll, we'll go. So so we have he's probably the, Yzma. The opposite of thin. Mm. But we have one one left we don't know about. It's like the new <laughs> F word. I love it. Mm. More whoosh, whoosh, that one. So we have mm. douche douche, mm -hmm. sploot, <laughs> sploot, and whoosh. Whoosh. Okay. Because it looks like a yeah. cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I fully support your. your <laughs> okay, I, so really like think Google search is a thing, and you should compare black and white. You ever play Pokemon games? Okay. No. Oh my gosh, yes. Because you, you have the outline. You're trying outline. to figure out. Yeah. Who's that Pokemon? Who's you that see, the, I know. I absolutely, I absolutely know who's that Pokemon. Come in. It's handy. like the famous wrestler Vacant, who they show on the card when the title is not in. Just an outline of a dude. I feel like I'm ex uh, on the outside here. There. <laughs> so we yeah. have those three, um, yeah. but the third one is a little. I, I kind of don't. So the yeah. internet was saying that it could be Radigan from the Great Mouse Detective, mm -hmm. or the Headless Horseman. Yeah. Both mm -hmm. of them are cloaky. 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 Cloak adjacent. <laughs> both, they both have cloaking devices. Mm. Well, it definitely really know. looks like a cloak. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Cloak. I mean. Is it, it a cloak a over the face? That yeah, that cloak. Oh, right. if it's a cloak over the face, it's probably Radigan. Mm. Oh. I mean, it's, it's like, like, it, it felt like it was more out to me. Mm. Well, like what? Well, like, wait, is, it, is it a out. cloak <laughs> or is it a cape? Oh. Is there really a difference? <laughs> well, a cloak you loop around uh, the front. I'm hood? going with cloak. Mm. Not, not Did cape? this be by DC cape? yet? It not could cape. be Batman. Oh, hood, yeah. Though, I think. It, I it's not a cape. It's a cloak. Oh. Oh, my gosh. There could be... Who else has a cape? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I have already established that yeah. I don't watch no Disney it movies. Could it could be Thor. It could well, be Thor. Thor's not a villain. It could be oh, Loki. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Loki. It could be Loki. Loki's there you go. Got a cape. But that's Marvel. That's Disney. Disney. Owned by Disney. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, Disney Th owns Thor, Thor is the most beautiful Disney princess. That's yeah. true. Thor is. <laughs> Isn't it's Deadpool true. a Disney princess technically? Hmm? Uh, he, no. No, I don't think so. No, because he's owned by Disney now. Yeah, but it doesn't mean he's not a princess. He can be a princess if he wants. We're all princesses in our hearts. Okay. So. <laughs> I feel like a song is coming up. Nope. So if you want to speculate yourself on this image, you can check out that Disney Villains Instagram post on the Disney Villains Instagram channel. Yeah, I'm sure they're just dashing to their keyboards right now. Well, apparently uh, Chat uh, wants me to be ejected from the studio for not having seen Mulan. <laughs> yeah, you should. Well, it's like, <laughs> it is kind of like the best I Disney just, movie just, of that generation. Mm. She has like a If you skipped any of them, clock. the fact that you skipped Mulan is just like, well, why? I, I don't think I've that seen. That one was so good. I don't know if I've seen like any since. So, so like the Hercules. Hercules. Okay. I, don't, I don't think I saw that. Have you seen Tarzan? What? You didn't see that. How about Journey to Atlantis? Hmm. No, so I, th I think I think from like Hercules <gasps> onward, I don't think I saw anything. I stopped watching them when they stopped being musicals. Mm. Well, but they I, did I think go like back Beauty and the be... Beast, Lion King era were probably where I fell off the wagon. Wow. That's, yeah, so you just missed it. Really. Yeah. Mm. Mulan mm. was a good one. Mulan. I hear that's what I hear. And it's gonna be in the new the new one. The yeah. New Mulan. Sorry, like off that, topic. That trailer yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be definitely more whoosh. Yeah, I am all for it. We'll see. So that's the third villain, right? Whoosh. Whoosh. So. Yeah. Moving on, before I reveal what other uh, 
essential canon I have I not experienced. Oh my gosh, just dig, dig, dig that I feel hole. like we went really savaged on that, like, content. Mm -hmm. right I was there. savaged. In, yeah. in a world in which I was savaged, I <laughs> had Guys, no I, allies. I feel like you're trying to feed me a segue, and I can't figure <laughs> out what it is. Oh, that's right, Savage Worlds! Their adventure <laughs> edition is finally coming to stores and shelves and Kickstarter backers starting in September. All hands. Very, very excited about this. Basically, mm. uh, yeah, I'm all hands with this one because it's Savage Worlds, which uh, they make riffs right now. Oh, so, oh uh, what? what? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, have, you tried, have you tried riffs? You tried I have, riffs? I have. Okay, I, uh, okay. I tried it in the Savage Worlds setting, make sure. and mm. I love it. Mm. Uh, this is the latest of the uh, Savage World settings. What it's done is it's revamped a lot of the rules. It just, uh, I mean, although they made sense, it's just made them easier. It's, mm. made the, it's made the whole game easier to play. Having played the new Adventure Edition. Has it made uh, it more adventurous? It absolutely yeah. has. Yeah. I mean, Savage Worlds is already known for its fast moving combat, mm -hmm. uh, which, and, and, it, the, and the fact that it's. And it's your favorite system. It is yeah. my favorite. If you had to is, pick one, it would be the It one. is hands down my favorite role playing system right now. Do you mm. have like. Um, a sticker with your smiling face on it that they could put on as like Christian <laughs> approved. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> All have you tried? Okay, maybe somebody wants yeah, to see yeah. that, but I don't. I mean, everyone watching right now. But I probably have that. that person blocked on mm. Facebook right now, <laughs> so <laughs> they would just buy a roll of them and put them everywhere in their house. Mm. Sticker. Oh, I do miss her sometimes. <laughs> anyway. Oh. <laughs> too, too real. Too real. Got too real too oh, fast. Back, 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 back to back, Adventure back. Time. So, one of the cool things that they are doing with the adventure set is that they are releasing uh, their sort their main book in uh, hardcover. It's edition. the first time, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, for the first time. We have like we've, there's been other hardcover editions of some of their books before, but okay. they've been very very limited and are usually very thin books. This is a 280 page book. So, nice. this is the first time the core book has been hardcover. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's gonna be amazing. Mm. And it's still. You know, it's still only like a $40 book. Hmm. The nice thing about Savage Worlds is they keep it real cheap. Mm. And I don't mean quality-wise. I mean, they, they, put out their pa they put out their books in, you know, in a paperback format. They mm -hmm. usually charge $20 or less for them. So they're very, been very, very, you know, gamer-friendly in the fact that you can afford yeah. to buy all yeah, of their stuff yeah. Yeah. if you like it. But they, they are bringing out the accessories for this yeah. box set, I was about to guys. say, they sell it to you cheap if you want it. Mm -hmm. But if you've got the money, <laughs> they have, they, 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 they have an essential box set. If you want to spend your money, set. they can take that yeah. money. Yeah. And they can give you box set. I feel like it's the drug dealer, like, here, here's the sample. Yeah. Yeah, but a little bit. Here's the but the problem is, the sample that they give you is the entire game. It's mm -hmm. everything you need to play. Yeah. So it's more like So the essential box set, which is also being released around the same time, is comes with a world builder's guide, yep. a GM screen, uh, and those and the GM screen for Savage World is awesome. Uh, a setting booklet. It's got reference cards. Uh, it's got uh, bennies. Bennies, and those are like the, the poker chips that you use, kind of like your action points that you can use for stuff in the games. Mm. I really like the uh, the proprietary ones they use. I used to use just regular poker chips at mm -hmm. home, mm. and they do work fine. But these are much much cooler and usually have pictures on them. Uh, also. It comes with an oversized deck of cards, which is the, they use a regular deck of cards to use their initiative system. Mm. So I'm just having a great big giant deck of cards is going to be super fun to play with anyway. Not only that, nice. but it comes with space to fit the core. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> you space. Because at this point you're going to have it. Yeah. Like you, you, yeah. you buy the you buy the forty dollar hardcover, you stick it in your brand new box set. Do you know if the essentials kit is it enough for one player, or is it enough for like the DM can buy it and the table can? Mm. So yeah, the 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 cards is, the, is something that the whole table uses. The yes. bennies are something that the whole table uses. Right. It's it's there for your group. Mm. So it's not something you're just going to be using by yourself. To tie back, I'm just going to suggest maybe that if you're a group who is um, playing Savage Worlds a lot, maybe mm -hmm. if you chip in together, you buy your DM the oh. essentials kit oh. instead yeah. of and paying that, him that, outright. And yeah. then might they be can a good feel way to go. very appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About getting <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, one of the other yeah, things that this uh, that this box set comes with that I'm a really big fan of uh, are the templates. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, what those are are uh, you know because they do it on a grid. Yes. Just like you know the one inch grids, just like they do for Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. Uh, but if you want to know how much space something takes up, they have these little templates that you can just lay over mm. the grids. It shows you like okay, so this cone effect is going to take up this much space. Oh yeah. This is a large burst template. This is a small burst template, and mm. it's. It's just so handy and makes the combat go that much faster. Mm -hmm. Great. I remember using those when, because I think uh, for this Savage Worlds, uh, the Explorers was the one that I got introduced mm -hmm. to. That was my first breakout game from D and D. Mm. Sweet. Yeah. The Explorers edition. Uh, the that, that's you, that's the, the one where the pages would yeah, come the, out in the front. Where they <laughs> ripped apart, where you just like opened it and. 
Yeah, they, they, they fixed that. <laughs> they fixed it. It's fixed now. It's, it's good. Fixed. And Don't even, worry if about it, it. even if it's not 100% fixed, you can still just pick up the game for 10 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that would be a thing. I remember for working at Mox, it, people would come in and see the big fancy book, like for, for D&D. They're like, do you just have like the paperback version? It's like, well. For D&D? Yeah. Hmm. For well, for because it's expensive, right? Sure, sure. You know, if you as a person who buys books, you're like, well, there's the hardcover edition. If you don't know about role playing, it's like there should always be a paperback version. It's, 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 well, it's, it's kind of weird. <coughs> for, like to me, uh, I've reached the point where like I don't want to buy a book unless it's hardcover. Like unless hmm. it's hardcover and durable and nice, mm. I just want a PDF. Really? Yeah. Mm. I feel like space wise, I like having the floppies. Mm -hmm. Well, it, but it, it's weird. Like to me, space wise, mm -hmm. like if I only have enough space to get one book. I want that book to look nice. Mm. So I want the hardcover. Yeah. And then everything else I basically get PDF. So more and more of my RPGs are going to like one or two books for the line and then I get everything else. See, I hide all my books in a separate room so people don't look at them anyway because I don't want people <laughs> to think I can read. <laughs> so the soft covers work for me. So it's like my mom's uh, collection. My, my extra room is already, is already full of miniatures and board games I haven't played. Mm. So I don't have a, a space. I need you to get a bigger rooms. place. You have extra rooms. I, I'm so mad at you all right now. Oh, I have yeah. no extra rooms. I don't have any extra rooms Do you live now in Seattle? because it's full. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, then you yeah. can't afford extra rooms. <laughs> yeah, I have extra I live 70 miles away, so I can have extra rooms. Yeah, yep. that's fair. So, anything else? That's it for Savage Worlds, but yeah. don't get it. I feel like it's very magical, your feeling about this Savage Worlds oh, game. It's so it is, it is very magical. Yeah. It is very you know. magical. Yeah. Just Do like we have other, a, other magical things. Any other magical things coming up? Yeah. Anything involving... Miniatures. Only the most magical property of all time, Harry Disney? Potter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but this is real magic. It is used wands, you cast spells, you say words. It's real magic. <laughs> you say words. <laughs> but like, so like, who, 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 bagooba or something. Wow. Even I. <laughs> so you haven't those. seen any of I'm these. I'm not, not infringing. In I'm not going like, In Gorgio. <laughs> That's Repero. the spell everybody knows, right? <laughs> so. Uh, it's the one I'd like to learn most. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harry Potter Miniatures. The mm -hmm. Harry Potter Miniatures game itself is not new. Yeah, it's been out for a while, like a, a year, year and a half. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, and when it first came out, so it's an interesting concept, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. minis games, unpainted, mm -hmm. unassembled minis. Yeah, because I think we talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, at least an expansion. We had a headline where we were really curious about whether this would be a gateway for people who had not been into like um, uh, not pre-painted unassembled miniatures, yeah. mm -hmm. if the IP would bring them into this kind of market. E exactly, because we're wondering you know, how much mm -hmm. overlap there is between people who are into the Harry Potter universe and people are into painting, assembling minis and playing minis games, mm -hmm. which there's, I'm sure there is some overlap. Uh, but there's not necessarily an inherent overlap. So, like, tons of these characters came out. There's the whole game. Unfortunately, there was some quality issues with the pieces, with the, the minis that were released. Mm -hmm. So there would be things like very small, like the minis So it sounds like the nice. plastic was really brittle. Yes, and especially like the wands, trying to glue that together, and it broke. So that's yet another barrier. Again, if you are just getting these to paint them and have them mm -hmm. and maybe check out the game, then that's going to be a barrier, you know, if you're just like... And if you're just getting into it in the first place, you know, yeah. your first experience with the minis is like they break, very easy to kind of mm -hmm. give up on that. But they're upgrading the set. Mm -hmm. So they're. So this is like a new core set. Yes, mm -hmm. new core set, upgraded resin, more durable parts. So I think just solving the a little bit of the quality mm -hmm. issues. It sounds like the rules are still compatible with the old version. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. And can you use the new figures with the old cheapo break ones? There. <laughs> uh, and then I think if you win, you can just crush the old ones. Yeah, yeah easily from what I understand. So it becomes a legacy game, uh -huh. you know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so there's going to be 13 minis, Harry, Hermione, Ron, Death Eaters, and some monsters. Buy extra sets of twins. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just Sorry. having the Too soon. improved quality <coughs> uh, is going to be a big Oh, and a, and a metal tin, too? And a metal, metal tin. tin, yeah. All right. Quality tins. Yes, and, and this is the kind of thing, you know, there's like just having these characters that like people are just so passionate in mm -hmm. they'll buy anything Harry Potter. Like we mm -hmm. at Mox Morning House we always have like tons of Harry Potter stuff. People love that. So be able to get the actual characters. Well yeah, we were just talking about like who should get this. Yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. it like it is one of those really weird choices of like how much crossover do you expect here? Yeah. But you know, you were saying that you thought the kind of the best 
I, I guess, use of this mm. is if you're a really big Harry Potter fan and you want to try miniature painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not into miniatures games, you know, buy these because you're going to love putting the figures together and spending time with them. Yeah. And then you'll have a game to play if you want to. And this is another thing about the durability. People are using these as action figures or as toys, mm -hmm. you know, just to play around with if it's like kids, you know, mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'm going to act out the Harry Potter, then having them be durable and can be a way. And small enough to eat. That's awesome. Yes. Well, Take not it. young, young kids, oh. but yeah. <laughs> Stop eating Presumably. your figures. Yeah. We've talked about that. And plus, you know, there's always those people who just collect memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's a big thing, you know, giving so, something. I'm, I'm real curious to see how well this will work out. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I think we were real curious about it before, and if it had quality problems, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't really give us a fair shake at seeing how much that crossover audience is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. We shall see. Speaking of changes, yeah, oh, I hear, uh, I, hear uh, I hear from a little bird with a big pink mohawk that they are. <laughs> it's more purple. It's more purple. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it, it plays pink. Mm. Uh, <laughs> is that there are some new rules happening with uh, with one of our favorite crowdfunding sites? Yeah. So Kickstarter has released. I told you recently. not to say that word. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Christian <laughs> is having a yep. Kickstarter moment. He's today. having today's the last day for. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. You're gonna get through this together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <coughs> a crowdfunding platform mm -hmm. has recently changed a number of its policies, uh, or kind of redefined its guidelines. Elaborated. Basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the we have a link to the to the specific changes but mm -hmm. there's also uh, a link to um, Stonemeyer games Jimmy Stegmeyer from Stonemeyer games yes giving some context on some of the specific changes yeah so his thoughts on how they're going to impact you know tabletop Kickstarters but they they come down to things like you know um, in your Kickstarter don't say what your MSRP is going to be don't you know don't confirm the price don't say that it's going to be this much of a discount on the final retail price. Mm -hmm. Well, don't say that it's coming to mm -hmm. retail. Don't predict things mm -hmm. that aren't 100% certain. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Like that's to be honest, that's the kind of the general theme of all these rules. <laughs> yes. Is yes. Yep. if it doesn't exist yet, don't, don't act like it. it does. Yes. So if it's not in retail yet, don't say it's in retail. Yeah. Uh, if if you don't have a physical cop version of it, don't make pictures that look like you do. Yeah. Yes. What were you gonna say? Oh no. That's oh, okay. Mm. That was uh, in. Yeah. So like the, it's. You know, don't say it's going to come to retail with this kind of discount. Mm, yeah. um, and also make sure that you what you're asking for is the full price. There, I have seen mm -hmm. many Kickstarters. Like, I, I can understand why they're covering their, their booties on this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because there have been many Kickstarters that lower their prices. L lower their overall funding goal. So they yeah. can go, uh, we got funded in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Da, da, da. Yeah, so there, there's two problems with that. Yeah. One is they lower the funding goal so that they will get funded yes. so they can get the money. Mm -hmm. And then they do it to say that they got funded really quickly or yeah. they got funded at a really high percentage rate yeah. mm -hmm. even if the actual cost to do the project is much higher. So like there are Kickstarter rules where like you don't have to go to Kickstarter for all of your funding. Yes. If you do have funding elsewhere, you can just go to Kickstarter to supplement that. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you should probably be clear about that in the project to explain why you're only asking for ten grand for a project that's clearly going to take a hundred grand. Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. So you know they're also talking about you know, they don't want you to say that you're the best or the most or the cool. Like, don't use smallest. superlatives. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> world smallest watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try to avoid things like well, that. Well, that's something mm. you can back up. If it's the smallest, you can back it up. If it's the biggest, you can also or, back it up. Or if but it's, if it's, it's the, the best, best. Yeah. yeah, you can't. Yeah. Or the most amazing. Or, yeah. The most expensive, I feel like you could back it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, well, I think just in general, using mm -hmm. terms, you say be descriptive of what it is mm -hmm. and, yeah. and why people are excited about it. False, like, um, false expectations in people's minds mm -hmm. yeah. when they're like, oh, you know, like you go to these restaurants with the world's best pancakes yeah. and their pancakes are horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. <laughs> so where is this place? Or they, they might have been fine, but you had the expectation that they would yeah. be amazing, and so they don't live up to that. So I think the big rule that they've put in place that I think is going to have a, a, an impact on but tabletop. But not the biggest. Not the biggest. Not the biggest. <laughs> a one of the biggest <laughs> oh. um, is that you're not supposed to show your product packaging if it hasn't been produced yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are a lot of, again, a lot of it is don't show the thing to make it look real if it doesn't exist yet. Yes. So they say you can have renderings yeah. if they look like renderings. Yeah. You can't have a photorealistic rendering that doesn't look like it is artificial. Like, don't 
a fake a photo, basically. Yeah. Mm. So, but there's it's really hard to find a board game Kickstarter now that doesn't have a pretty nice looking version of the box. Yeah. Yes. So it'll be really curious to see how strictly Kickstarter wants to enforce these rules. Because um, like the intent behind them to make people like honestly say what they have, what it's going to be, not make promises they can't keep, that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, like it, it's really curious, are they going to enforce these across the board, which mm -hmm. will affect a lot of people's ability to kind of market and get people excited about their projects? Yeah. Or are these rules in place and fairly strict so that when a project is like clearly questionable mm -hmm. um, that they have these rules for them to shut them down by. Like, yeah. I'm curious to see, we, we don't know yet. We well, don't know. It's interesting because some of these have definitely been rules. Like you've never really been supposed to show things that aren't real. You know, mm -hmm. like I, mm -hmm. I remember seeing this project where it was this whole underground like labyrinth of like art and plants and it's like this mm -hmm. hangout space and it looks really fancy and I think it got taken down because it's just like hey you can't do that so the ideas behind this have been in mm -hmm. place but mm -hmm. now they're just being I think they were they were fairly strictly enforced for like um, gadget projects yeah electronics projects things like that but I don't think they were you haven't really wide. invented this yeah. yet Tom <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the, part yeah. of the issue with this like you, you were saying it's like oh when someone says I've been funded in five hours that it's a little obnoxious the problem mm -hmm. is like that's become part of the language of Kickstarter mm -hmm. and so that you you're 2,000% funded. That's part of the language of Kickstarter. So now, if you do start dialing back on this and you aren't, you don't have that badge, their consumers aren't going to know. They aren't going to know that Kickstarter's put this rule in place. They're just going to be like, oh, I guess that one's not funded yet because they haven't put the badge because they always put up the badge when they're funded. You know, yeah. there's a lot mm -hmm. of little well, things. But I also, I think there's a really interesting question about how the economy of Kickstarter works. Yeah. yeah. How many people are on Kickstarter in the Kickstarter culture mm. who understand those things? versus how many people are brought to the project because of an outside source, yeah. mm -hmm. and they may not be big Kickstarter backers. Yeah, well, like, yeah. I am obviously a wild outlier <laughs> for a number of reasons when it comes to Kickstarter. You've backed a Kickstarter, too. Or, or two, Maybe. yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I have backed a number of Kickstarters. Mm -hmm. um, but Kickstarter you know, has you really... Did yet? There's... <laughs> it, <laughs> it has really <laughs> interesting numbers about how many people come in fresh mm. and back mm. one or two Kickstarters and that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Versus mm -hmm. people who regularly back. And for, you know, I think there's probably kind of three markets of, yeah. I don't even know what Kickstarter is, I'm here for this one project yeah. or this two projects. Then there's the, you know, I'm, I'm here fairly regularly. You know, I kind of, I'm hip to the lingo. I know what this badge means. Mm. And then there's probably people like me who are like, that badge means I am not interested in your project now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the things about these marketing techniques, so these are the as seen on TV. This mm -hmm. is for the audience who doesn't know that much about it. Because they yeah. see this big thing. It funded. It's like, oh, other people have backed it. That means it's a sure bet. Or like, we've made so much money. And they say like, oh, they've made percentages above what they thought they were going to do. That means every once they and again. They made 6,000% of the goal. on the train that mm -hmm. other people are already on. It's a psychological thing like we talked about. Sure. So that's like, are you taking away are you confusing uh, i want to so be part of something there's <laughs> the, the thing that i'm going to go ahead and just throw a little theory in for mm. this oh. um mine is more of the loophole theory here because this doesn't say kickstarter rules Clip these, is bonsai these loophole are theory. Guide guidelines lines. so yeah. there's more wiggle room yeah. you know like for people who are like hey you can't go against the terms of service that's a sure mm -hmm. thing like you don't cross you don't cross yeah. these rules guidelines are just suggested things mm -hmm. that you can do yeah but are kind of gray, if you can yep. say, you know, like, like this little loop. That, that's where Frowned I think, upon that's where I think these, upon rule, these guidelines might be there so that when they have a project that is clearly questionable, yeah. mm -hmm. they have the justification to shut it down, but it may not be something that they're going to apply strictly to everything. Yeah. yeah. So it, sh it is a change in their stance, so it's curious to see what effect it will have mm -hmm. and how they're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll just have to, to wait and see about this. I hope we're not going to hold hold our breath too long mm. for this. Hold our breath? Hold for oh, oh, I hold. see where you're going with this one. Hold I don't. Oh, I don't because I'm looking at the no. wrong page. Yeah. Bundle, <laughs> bundle of holding your breath. Oh. oh. That was good. That was oh, good. no. I was yeah, looking yeah. at the right page. You just yeah. didn't make any sense. <laughs> Thank you. <Okay. laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I feel like she gets full points. Yes. Yeah. At first, point. I was just like, I don't know. He didn't do that in the movies. <laughs> I don't. Oh, wait. I get it. Because yeah. <laughs> holding. Bonsai gets all the you, points. Yeah, I'm keeping track of everyone's score on my papers here. 500 points for Bonsai. All right. So we are on. 
Are those internet points? Because those are worth a lot. Yeah, I know. Oh, the oh that's yeah. amazing. Thank Congratulations you. on the 500 <laughs> points. points. So we're moving on to bundles. <laughs> bundle of holding this week has a bundle called Conan Essentials. What's Me Conan? Get out of my studio. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, in mm. case you are not familiar, is a very, very popular figure in literary Emma, fiction. If I don't have to leave because I haven't seen Mulan, you don't have to leave. I right? was nobody just, has wait, wait, are you set up? Just so, I, just no, so we're clear, so okay, nobody has here. to leave. Please stay. <laughs> I will get through this. Some of our Everybody audience just somehow down. might not know what Conan is. I'm just talking He's for the barbarian. people. Mm -hmm. all right. He's a barbarian, that's all you need to know. All right, yeah. I'm going to treat you like you're stupid. For just a moment. Conan is a series of books about a man who hits things. Mm. Hard? Does he hit them hard? It's also a series of movies about Arnold Schwarzenegger, who looks like he's trying to hit things. He grunts a lot, too. Mm. He does grunt a lot. That's an important part of hitting things. Real Conan does not have an Austrian accent. What? I know. Mm. He has a Sumerian accent. What is that might be a little harder to pull off. What no, maybe for yeah. you. I don't, I don't think we know what a Sumerian accent sounds Sumerian. like. <laughs> Not a Sumerian accent, a Simerian accent. Oh, that's right. Sumerian. Yeah, ah. If you had a Sumerian accent, we would all, all, our, all of our heads would explode if we heard the words. Mm. That's how that works. Uh, this is Conan the Sumerian. Uh, well, <laughs> Conan the Sumerian now. Yes, uh, <laughs> right. Mm. Papers so this, is, this bundle contains written. the official tabletop role-playing game for yeah. Conan. From Modiphius, it uses mm -hmm. the same system as Mutant Chronicles and several of their other IPs, like including the, the Star uh, Trek. Star Trek, right, yeah. which is yeah. the big one. Mm -hmm. I've never played Star Trek. I, 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 I'm I gonna, played it once. It was actually pretty good. I'm going to have to give it a try mm. and play it with a group of non-murder hobos to, mm. to really get <laughs> it to work. This run. So yeah. what you get is everything you need for your starting sword and sorcery adventure. It comes with the uh, Conan Rules book. It comes out with a couple of adventures. It's got a GM toolkit. It's got a bunch of maps so you can figure out where the heck Sumeria is. I said Sumeria. That I time. heard that. Mm. Yeah. It was for you. <laughs> the bonus collection is going to, uh-huh. Uh the bonus collection comes with several ebook supplements, including, let's see, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Thief, Conan the Pirate, Conan the Brigand. Wow, that's I'm about, sensing a theme here. I feel like that's just like, you know, you, you get those costume change books and you just have cool. Uh, the thing is, like he pretty much, yeah. Conan, Conan he pretty the much wears doll. the same outfit. He just like throws uh, on a vest. But uh, what, I, what I do love is instead of being like the complete book of barbarians, it's Conan the Barbarian. The complete book of thieves. No, it's Conan the Thief. Mm. Conan did all of this better than you're going to believe it. <laughs> Conan, like, is, Conan is the best at every non-magic yep. using class Wait, in D&D. I just realized Conan is fantasy James Bond. <gasps> Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. It does. But with more hitting things. You didn't watch the same James Bond movie. <laughs> yeah, no, he, hit, he hit a lot of he things. He hit a lot of things. So, <laughs> if and you know also, what I'm saying. He also invaded a lot of spies. <laughs> and the lamentations of the women. <laughs> like how you like how you started out with an innuendo and you're like, and then you just nah, went no, like, whatever. No, he totally nailed all those chicks. <laughs> <laughs> he invaded a lot of people. It was people. He invaded people. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely win the internet subtlety <laughs> award for the day as well. Wow, Bob's saying it's all the voice today. Points. I'm winning. Uh, I feel like we need to do a whose line is it anyway I am, of the show where at the yeah. end we decide which of us wins. Yes. I am I am, I am moving on from Conan now because this is only going to get worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Are there any Kickstarters this week? No. There's none. No, none. That's amazing. The, that means we get to leave on time. Yeah. No, also yes. Oh. oh. No, I think you mean... There's only... Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Kickstarters. So... The first Kickstarter is a very, very weird one. I really do recommend people look at this this project. Oh, this, mm. uh, awesome. this is Principal Dilemma. Have you ever wanted to play a party game about the trolley problem? Because <laughs> now you can. About an emotional, moral yep. dilemma. Um, so, so basically a moral and ethical yeah, dilemma. So, so yeah. I, I would be Homer, in this example, yeah. flipping over a moral problem of the trolley problem. There's a train, there's five people on the track, I've got a switch to send it to kill this one person. Do I do it? I decide yes or no. And then you is like Aristotle and Socrates and you know some other George. Greek, George and George. <laughs> George uh, the philosopher. All of you play deceit cards to mm. change the variables of my moral dilemma. Maybe you're like, hey, that one person's your mom. And do you still want to run over your mom and save these other five people? Yeah. And I'm like, hell no. But then you're like, yeah, but now it's not five people. You play a card to change the number. Now it's 100 people. They're just all laid out uh, on But the one track. of them is a Nazi. <laughs> you're going oh. to kill 100 people to save your, to, to save your mom? Yeah. Like, so mm -hmm. all of you would be playing cards to get me to change my mind on the moral quandary I've made a decision on. And like, 
it, it's that, there are so many like you only win pose, if everyone pose a, dies. There's, there's, there's so many like right? pose a question, yeah. pose a question, play a card, pick a winner, party games, mm, and this yeah. is so weirdly divergent from that that yeah. I can't like. Well, it's, it's like that except really except instead of like it. instead of making you have fun, it makes you hate your friends. Yeah, and, 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 and like. Tear you apart relationship. Well, it's like, oh my god, you would really do but, that, but, you yeah, sick but, bastard. But think about how much nerds love debating the minute details of mm. a question okay. yeah. instead of the actual. Boba point Fett's of on one track. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, this is the same stuff that nerds have been fighting about since the beginning of exactly. Nerd Dump. This is yeah. why it's, it's Superman such a or really Mighty Mouse. Compelling game. I feel like this is an okay game to play if you already know that you are a bunch of horrible people. Oh, yeah, right. there you go. Yeah, yeah so not a game for strangers. Not certainly. a game for for strangers, I feel like this would be the worst game for a date. You'd be like, hey. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. I would skip so oh many gosh. weeks of red flags <laughs> and great sex. <laughs> <laughs> and you well, think you think these are the kinds of things you never forget, right? It's like you would kill your mom. Derek would kill his mom. Like, <laughs> like these you just remember that for the rest of the time. I don't want to be thinking about know. Derek killing his mom every time I look I think, at Derek. I think one of the like I watched a video. One of the examples <laughs> like was like, hey, your child has a super infectious disease that can kill like fifty percent of the human population. Your but child you, has an infection. Wait, what are we talking? But you sorry, can either defensive. let your child live. Or because the disease won't kill your child, yeah. it'll kill everybody else. Yeah. But uh, you kill fifty percent of the human population, or mm -hmm. do you kill your child and save fifty percent of that's your child? And that's all the time we it's have just, for today. Yeah. Folks. So look, I, I, all I have to say is that I loved the ending of Last of Us a lot. I no love spoilers. those. I, I'm, I'm not saying what it is, but I love those kinds of questions. Mm. I think a lot of nerds. What if you're playing with your spouse? Like you would kill our child? Like this is divorce territory. Well, I mean, well, at it least would have to be wow. if you were practical. Wow. I wow. understand. I don't know, but uh, mm. I think it, it, it does sound like if you don't like, I feel like this is also a game if you're in debate. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how many nerds are in debate? Anyway, <laughs> it has zero days left. Back it today. Mm. Back or it today. Or absolutely don't. There. One. Of, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those two. Divisive. I feel. But it is a really neat project. Mm. I think people should at least check it out. I wonder how it is, because I've been in classes before where people are like, oh, I'm always going to be the righteous person. And mm. I'm like, no, if there's a school shooter, I'm running away. Mm. Sometimes there's no right decision, guys. Yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's what the game I, is trying to teach us. Yep. Yeah. I think we've all learned something today. Mm. Let's talk about some adventure tiles or something. Oh, yeah. You know what? I like adventure tiles. Oh, God. Mm. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, there is. Adventure tiles. <laughs> adventure tiles. But uh, what is that? there is a Mimic Grid um, coming out. It has today is the last day of this Kickstarter. And so mm -hmm. what it is is like you, you like chess, chess sex boards, right? And you like, uh, and if you're high end enough, you like the dungeon or the the dwarven forge. Mm, How yeah. if you like a little middle ground in between the two that mm. is like in like not necessarily just a rollout mat, which is pretty solid, but they're like, like that medium level gas. Medium <laughs> level, mm. but these are like magnetic ten by ten grids with a little foam bottom mm -hmm. and. Well, uh, so, so like the yeah. gr the the grid is magnetic, so that yes. each ten by ten section will. Stick to each other. Stick to each other okay. and stick to the things that you have on top. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, you can do the, like, Dairy Queen trick of flipping the pieces over because uh. they have, like, little pieces that you can just, like, I, throw I, I, on. I don't know either. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dairy Queen? Yeah. My... <laughs> <laughs> the the thing is like, not supposed to come out. Oh, yeah, or they can hold the blizzard upside down. Yeah, they down. hold the blizzard upside Man. down. Yes. Sorry, that was a marketing campaign from <laughs> 40 years ago, and I forgot about it somehow. <laughs> I think I've been to Dare Queen twice. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, if, if like me, your DM is a three-month-old kitten, yeah. then it's very helpful for having not yeah, all your pieces be knocked over. Not all the pieces. Over. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's also, I think it's a little bit easier to store, mm. in my personal opinion, because those, like, um, and the surface claims to be like you can't put permanent marker on there. Mm, well, you can put permanent marker but, on and then I take mean, it off. And take it off. Yeah. And so that's one of the bigger it, it, things. But guys, it's permanent. I, it, apparently, apparently, it's not. Is this going to be a, a crisis for the permanent marker industry? The permanent marker is like, I thought I was permanent. This well, whole I time. mean, like for yep. me, and it turns had, out I'm not. It's like I've an had emotional. those like, uh, like chess <laughs> they'll, they'll six boards before, where mm -hmm. we're like, I grab a marker and I just write. And well, because this realize. reminds me of tactiles that yeah. were mm -hmm. like in the early 2000s. They were like kind of puzzle pieces that were about that size, mm -hmm. and they were wet erase, dry erase, and you would just kind of build your encounter off screen and as the players moved you just put down another tile yeah. right uh, mm. this sounds kind of like a modern magnetic version of that yeah very similar um, but magnets are awesome and they yeah do, how do they, work? <laughs> they are Science. working with um, separate artists as well to like bring God. very cool mm -hmm. like environments that you can 
just plop down right on top and it is a one by like a 10 by 10 foot or 10 by 10 inch <laughs> 10 by 10 inch sorry grid so it's the standard one inch block per character mm. space uh, and then they have a wooden briefcase to fit tiles and a book so yes mm. And if you don't want 2D um, figures, they actually do work with another company that create more metal, like 3D custom, like, you know, like... Like regular figures, but with magnets on the bottom? Yeah, with magnets on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can also take almost any of your minis and just put magnetic pads on the bottom. Yeah. Um, and I think they, they uh, part of the Kickstarter sells, like, um, magnetic um, rubber mats you can put on top, yeah. um, terrain you can kind of toss yeah. down on it. Yeah. Um, they also have, uh, I think you were talking, the 3D ones you're talking about are like... Yeah walls and dungeon walls and stuff like that that have magnets on the bottom, so those will stick in. There's a lot of interesting stuff there. Yeah. yeah, and then for me, the interesting thought that I took away from this, like if you were one of those people with a minimalistic house, you don't want a table, and you want something that you can fold away or like keep on a wall, that's Ooh. something you can mount, and it's a different way of like, you know, playing, but it's still a usable playing surface. Oh, that's super cool, I want that now. Uh, what, no table? <laughs> no table. Well, I mean, I don't we, have a table. I want a table. We do a, a show about tabletop game, guys. I mean, if you don't have a table, <laughs> but no, why, it's why, why are we living? D&D on a wall. That yeah. sounds super cool. It is more accessible yeah. than people So you can, can just take Roll20 and play it in person, you know. Have you ever done that? Oh, I should. So you take, you just put a big TV on the wall. Oh, oh. put it on the TV. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but you don't get to physically move them, and they stick to each other, and they're fighting. And I mean, you like, can go rub your hands think, all over think, the screen yeah. if you want. I think we realized who was <laughs> using their Harry Potter minis as, as action figures. <laughs> no wonder you. It wasn't the kids. It was you. <laughs> pew pew. So ah. that is that is the mimic grid. Oh, oh no, we're gonna get hit by this. But the next Kickstarter we have has two days left. Yes. Most adorable Kickstarter. This one's the adorability. Most adorable? Oh, oh, oh. Of the week. Okay, yes, definitely of most the week. adorable. Of the week. I, I, most I thought you were giving it of all time. time. And I was with like, the wow. Which, with, with the exception of Journey Quest Season 4. Yes. Mm, I, I, that is the most yes. gorgeous <laughs> about that. Okay, that's fine too. <laughs> so yeah. Darwinauts is a game about like interdimensional exploration. And again, the art is, this is one people should just go check out. Because the art is really nice, really it's imaginative. Like an adorable turtle slug. The yeah. idea is that like the scientists have figured out how to go to another dimension. Mm. And you are playing scientists who are exploring that dimension. And you have to describe species like in a scientific manner. Mm -hmm. Not like, I saw a turtle slug. But like, <laughs> you you name the species and you get Hypidopterus. Yeah, yeah, sure. Monophae. <laughs> yep, they're Hypidopterus monophae. Uh, so it's just, it's really intriguing game idea. Really. Mm -hmm really mm. sp amazing artwork and this is designed by uh, um, Chris Bryan I think is his name yes yes I, I think um, he did favelas and lantern dice, dice game yep um, so th like th apparently it's like a, a worker placement tile laying laying like set collection like it has like all these different kind of mechanics but mm -hmm. it's not super heavy yeah. really gorgeous art check Just it out, it out. Yeah. so we also have the role players guide to heists Oh. Which, which is a, this is a cool supplement. It is. <laughs> I think everybody that I have talked to or shown would perhaps describe the video as earnest. Oh, earnest. very earnest. Oh, very like earnest. heartfelt. It is. Like it's this is yep. someone just getting on Kickstarter yep. and it is. pouring their heart out. Yep. And the, they're, they're <laughs> so it's not a great video. <laughs> is that what we're saying? <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, it's I like so it. It's extremely like endearing. It's, endearing. It's like. Campy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of Was that the nicest word you could come up with? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So I think I might be right. I haven't watched this the video, but I'm hard, checking okay? it out now. <laughs> so, uh, the project itself, however, is uh, about heists. Mm. Yeah. So it's got 25 or more, I think, depending on some of the stretch goals. Um, different fantasy, modern age, sci-fi heists mm -hmm. with a map, a scenario, you know, what you're trying to steal, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they've, I think they have a, a sample that has like three of the heists and, and a, a sample essay about how to run heists. Mm -hmm. So it has some stuff like that. And the, the thing that I particularly liked is that a thousand backers, they're planning on, I think it was 900 this morning, mm, yeah. uh, they're planning on releasing the content under an open gaming license. Uh, or, or a gaming right. license. So I, that you I can love just people do that. Exactly. Yes. Like, I really, really support any project that will uh, open source or release or especially a crowd. Like, I really feel that like for a crowdfunding project, yeah. to then be able to have a, a high stretch goal to release that material to the public to use is a really, really appropriate way to handle a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking about supporting your GMs and being nice to your GMs. Like, you just 
a picture, I picture my GM as this magical font of perfect information who just knows all of this stuff. I can't wait for the show. Like, we need <laughs> to cut be to paying your, a GM. We need to cut to your GM and they're just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> But they, so like, oh, well, they could probably put together a heist. How hard can it be? But like having something systemic like this, mm -hmm. systematic, that you can just plug it, plug and play kind mm -hmm. of into whatever you're doing. Yeah, it does uh, make it cool. easier for a lot of people, yeah. I feel like. And then it's like we have time for one more. Oh. <laughs> no, we, we, will, we will get through this. There. Oh, oh. we will oh. get through this. So there. Uh, <laughs> uh, the next Kickstarter, we have three days left for Pangea. Mm -hmm. This is a, a board game from Poland, which I think is worth noting more and more really exciting board games are coming out of Poland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like that one of the bullet, bullet points on this is another Polish game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so this Not is kind of a, a funky game. idea where the frame around the game is that you are playing the game, which is a simulation of the Permian-Triassic die-off Mm. to figure out how species survive through that, oh, yeah, to yeah, use yeah. that information to deal with the impending climate extinction event we have in the real world. Yeah. Earth simulator. Mm. Yeah, it's a really kind of weird <laughs> way to set the game up. And then the visual design is very like serious. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they use a lot of you know the, the fossils and animals from the era and stuff like that. Really, really interesting uh, execution on that. Mm -hmm. Really nice art. Again, it really reminds me of Darwinauts because it's a... It's kind of a board game about playing science in a way. I like <laughs> a it a lot. Board game about playing you guys science. Play science? Like that. I'll play science. science. Science is great. Well, how right. about we do the opposite of science and play <laughs> fantasy? Yes, let's uh -huh. do that. Uh, Fate Forge, <laughs> uh, fifth edition. Uh, it's got five days left. It's it pretty much is a fifth edition camp D and D campaign setting of, based off of swords and sorcery. The creators are uh, from uh, designers, the French designers from uh, Shadows of Ish. Esterin. Esterin. All right, yes, Esterin. <laughs> um, so there's two rule books that are available. There you got the Adventurer's Core Book, mm. which, uh, you know, provides the basic settings and everything like that. And in, it includes, like, exclusive feats, um, backgrounds, mm. character archetypes, and then a new class called the Scholar. Um, if you just check it out, the artwork for this book is amazing. That mm. just got me hooked on The Dragonborn seem to have, instead of, like, a, a hulky dragon paladin, they seem yeah. to be... Much slimmer, more Central American, kind of yeah. Aztec almost. Oh, yeah, cool. I was going to say, like, it, it is very Aztec. They, mm -hmm. they try to take a little bit from different cultures. It's mm. very cool. Um, they also, the second book is a grimoire setting. So it's a, a kind of like a horror magic kind of campaign. Mm. So it, it, it based more on, like, magic in this universe of the mm -hmm. uh, Ina. Mm. Or Iana? Iana. Iana? Iana. It's a fancy yeah, word. Sure. You know. <laughs> it's a fancy word. Um, Someone knows, okay? <laughs> it, it has rules about corruption, madness, and this new special magic called geomagic, or like earthbender yeah. kind of thing. Wow. Um, so, yeah. The bigger selling point about this is you want to get this book if you are the dungeon master, I believe. Mm. But they do have a free PDF, 66-page PDF that you can get on um, drive through RPG. RPG. Hmm. And I think that's just a really good selling so point. It's like the player's guide, basically. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the yeah. player's mm -hmm. guide, so you can, as a player, can still understand the rules and create a character before you go to the game. But the actual, like, everything, the world itself is just in this Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So I, w I would uh, just uh, encourage, and also the reason why I also would encourage this, because, unheard of, if you back this up, you can pick it up early at this you oh, know, yeah. event that's happening. Oh, called, there's an event? Yeah, Gen Con. <gasps> Never heard of it. Yeah, like maybe happen at the end of the month or something like that. Thanks for reminding me. There's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how far? How long? It's how far like two weeks? Two weeks? Two and a half We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about right, you? Next. What you got, Emma? <laughs> what do I got? I've got uh, more RPG supplements, uh, minimalist creature dice, and status condition markers. Mm -hmm. So we're talking a little bit, a uh, little bit about this before the show. So I've only ever really played theater of the mind mm -hmm. combat for D and D. Uh, I've done a little bit of movement and stuff in Roll Twenty, but a lot of it is just like you know, you go here, trying to paint a word picture about what's mm -hmm. happening. And I think certain groups really prefer one or the other. You know, some yep. people really need to have their minis like cool griffin arcing over the board, and some GMs would prefer to just you know <coughs> speak about it and not have it have it be a little bit more flexible. But this is great if you like the style where you're playing with stuff on the board. Mm -hmm. The condition markers, in particular, it's easy to forget those things like who's charmed, who's poisoned. You know, DMs kind of handle. Well, the, that. the key trait for these is that the condition markers are these little. 
uh, like rectangular cylinders, I guess, for lack of a better word. They're yeah, like, they're like uh, rectangular rods. Yeah. And each, there's like four sides. Each side is a different status, but they have the heft and weight of dice. Yeah. So they're chunky and they sound nice in your hand. Yeah. And then the, the chunky dice um, are actually just like one inch cubes that each face is a different monster. Yeah. yeah. So like you have a cube that has like goblin, kobold, orc, and stuff like on it. Mm. So the idea of getting a bunch of these to use as tokens for monsters that you might deploy on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get some of those things for status markers too. Like it, it's a really nice tactile component. Yeah. And a lot of times it really enhances the game. Yeah. And, and it can be a good middle ground too if you don't necessarily want to go full into minis. Because I mean WizKids has pretty much any mini that you could need. Mm -hmm for your campaigns, but if you want to say like, I don't know if I really want to paint the goblin or mm -hmm. have it or whatever, or have all those creatures lying around, so just having the dice, you know, yep. can be a yeah. good way to get into that. And plus it, it does seem like good high quality dice. They yeah. have it etched in versus just printed on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next Kickstarter with five days left is the Oko Chronicles, mm. um, which is another French uh, gaming product. We oui, oui. uh, yep. mean about feudal mm. Japan. Yep, about feudal Japan. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so this is based on the French comic like book, like many French products. Um, I'm, ah. pretty I'm pretty sure it's a French comic book, um, but it's a really, really gorgeous comic. A lot of the art is brought to this, and it's you know set like samurai and Ronin kind of adventuring around a really supernatural horror Japan. Mm -hmm. So this is the. Kickstarter board game. I was going to say, the is week. this the Kickstarter yep, board it game? It absolutely is. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, there's a lot of Kickstarter adventure board games. This one's a little bit different because of you know coming from a comic book, but also you, you don't just lay out tiles and kind of randomly explore. Mm -hmm. It has scenarios where you build a map and you are progressed through it. There's campaigns. Mm. Apparently, there's an investigation component where you're trying to reveal who the evil villain is and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, one person plays the monsters. There's were some interesting mechanical elements in there too. But mm. if you like adventure games, if you like um, you know like a, a fantasy feudal Japan setting, or you like the comic books, you should definitely check this one out. Mm. Uh, right. Next up is giving me a cuteness dilemma because I forgot about Kodama 3D for a second. Is mm. also an adorable game. Yep. But it's only so the second cutest for this week. I see. Mm. Uh, no, you already oh, said it. You already oh said gosh. it. <laughs> You're locked I mean, in. Don't sacrifice the, your integrity, the, Emma. The, the, <laughs> the slug turtles were very adorable. But Kadama is also, can they be the same? Just equally adorable? Well, but you There's a participation there trophy for adorableness. <laughs> okay. So right. Kadama 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a few games released in the Kadama universe. Uh, the first one is a very unique gameplay style where you're laying cards uh, asymmetrically, non-linearly in a grid. Mm -hmm. So most tile placement or card placement games is a very rigid structure mm -hmm. for it but this one is known specifically for kind of like well those branches are kind of touching and very beautiful too like mm -hmm. you're building out a tree yep. you're building you're growing a tree on a board you're growing a tree there are spirits on a tree it's, yeah. it's very very pretty and relaxing and it's called yeah. Kadama Kadama but yeah. isn't that like the, I feel like that's isn't that like, like a dude from Battlestar Galactica there's, well Kadama, Kadama are the spirits so in a uh, movie like picturing Edward James almost with branches <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know when it, I think Kadama though I think Pogs for some reason there <laughs> did, did, did nobody here watch Princess Mononoke? No, I was going to say, I Kadama did. are oh, the spirit creatures yeah. Yeah. in Spirited Away, or Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Yes. Those are the Kadama spirits. And yep. so the goal of this game is to have the make a beautiful tree, a good mm -hmm. home for your Kadama spirits. And this is a 3D version yes. of that game. This is a 3D version. There are quite a few variations to it. So you are building 3D with cardboard pieces that stick in. It's more about the physical balance, mm -hmm. almost like a dexterity game, because your tree has to not fall over. So okay. you have to build it in a ba balanced ma manner. And as opposed to Kadama, where you're kind of counting up the fireflies and the mushrooms on the tree and scoring each, t each turn, in this one you're going to have goal cards, and you can take more goal cards if you meet certain criteria. So it's a pretty, it's got a similar flavor to it, but mechanically it's going to be a pretty different game and more of a board presence of something like photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the kid you nurtured cuts you down and builds a house out of you. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, Christian, chat uh, suggests that we give you a number that make you feel better. Okay. Mm. $10,000 left. That does make me feel better. Thank yeah. you, chat. Hey. Thank you, chat. chat. Chat said what, but I wanted to check with you to make sure you were prepared. I haven't yeah. been able to look. I know. Yeah, I'm just So we have, we have two Kickstarters left before Christian can be released to entirely freak out. Mm. Uh, mm. So the second to last one is Red Carnations on a Black Grave. Uh, this is six days left. This is one of those yeah. um, story game RPG games that are about a very specific point in history mm. that I find intriguing. Mm -hmm. This one is a, about something I didn't even know about. Apparently... Uh, a Paris commune in 1871, like trying to establish uh, some sort of like communal um, 
commune, I guess. Like, it's just, yeah, like students coming together to kind of form a new society in Paris. Yeah. Um, and you play this through, like, I guess 72 days were the, the, the setting. Mm -hmm. You play through kind of like they three rounds. They tried to make rounds. an egalitarian mm -hmm. socialist state. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but apparently it did not work out well. No, it no. Is. Because all of the players play two characters. Yeah. And one of them is going to die at the end. So you play through three rounds, you phrase, you know, you set up these scenes, you do some, uh, you know, storytelling, they have specific characters that you get to draw from, mm. um, and then you have these cards that'll prompt you, like, this situation happened, you know, what did your characters do, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're going to learn about what happened, and then in round three, you have to decide which of your characters dies in the chaos of when this all comes down. Yep. Cool. So again, it's another one of those like very, very, very focused um, kind of historical storytelling games. They were comparing it to Montsegur, I'm assuming that's pronounced right, yeah. uh, 1244 Montsegur. and 10 Candles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the second to last bullet point there. Right. Mm. Authors compared to, to Montsegur. Uh, it's a French word. Who knows how? They don't even know how to Montsegur. pronounce it. Montsegur. <laughs> Someone um, knows how to pronounce it. So yeah. if you're into kind of uh, story games that have aspirations, Check that one out. Mm. And the last Kickstarter to talk about, uh, we'll do very quickly, because this is a Kickstarter for a book about the development of The Witcher. Mm. Ah. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have played that. There's the Witcher RPG, their tabletop role-playing game now. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So this is from Third Editions, which has done books on Zelda, Final Fantasy, Dark Souls, Dark Souls yep. stuff mm -hmm. like that. They do these really, really nice, like, um, um, you know, bookshelf or, or uh, coffee table books about the history and development of the game. Mm -hmm. And this is the one about The Witcher, uh, which I have a feeling a lot of people watching may have played and have strong feelings about. <laughs> yeah. So it's got details about the development, it's got interviews with the designers, mm -hmm. it's got probably uh, a bunch of concept art and stuff like that, and it has seven days left. Mm. Seven days. Seven, seven days. days. Yes. Well, wow, that was a lot of Kickstarter. That was a lot of Kickstarter. There was a lot of everything. We had, yeah. that, was a, that was a very, very full schedule. But you know what? We got through all of it. We did. Mm. I'm proud of us today. Did it. I really am. Nailed it. Teamwork. Yay, teamwork. So I'm afraid that's going to be it for Table Takes, presented by Gen Con this week. Make sure you join us next week on Friday. Stick around in just a few minutes for a rundown with uh, Mox Boarding House is going to be in today. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, don't forget the Fireside Chats with Peter on Wednesdays and, of course, the Brothers Murph on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. We also have Gen Con oh, news. Oh, Gen Con news on Tuesdays now. Yeah, Tuesdays. Yeah. Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. we, have at, we have at least a few more of those before we maybe don't have as much to talk about. There's yes. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's, <laughs> this time of year is very, very Gen Con heavy. But thanks for sticking around. We will see you next week. Have a, have a great gaming weekend. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Well. Just do it. See you around the table. Journey Quest. Yeah, I was about to say, do you want to you wanna direct there are only, Yeah, there, there's, I'm on a show called Journey Quest. You can just look it up on the internet. It's all <laughs> over that. Uh, it's got just a few hours left on the Kickstarter, and we are just so close. So yeah. uh, make sure I have a job tomorrow. <laughs> yep. If Journey, you feel like it. Journey Quest is from our friends at Zombie Orpheus, so go check them out. Yep. And if you don't have a chance to do that and the Kickstarter goes through, whether or not it does, we'll be at Gen Con this year running the film mm -hmm. festival, so uh, Ooh, you'll see plenty of us. And you have uh, at least two big events on the main stage. Two large main stage those events. Will, those will be streamed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe in the next couple of weeks we should start talking about some of the stuff that will be streamed from Gen Con. Ooh. Oh, we will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be there. And, I've got, and I'll bring our in faces. some like video of clips of past shows so they can see it. It'll Ooh, be fun. fun. Nice. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.